welcome to Grandad's Shed. Today we're inside, just need a little bit more space because we're going to be looking at this bike stand and we're going to take a little trip back in time and see what it looked like before I got it out of the box. So I've had it out of the box and started looking at it and thought I'd actually do an unboxing. There's a few things that I don't like on how it's manufactured and uh, thought I'd bring you along with the journey. So, first of all I noticed when it arrived the bag was split open and gone through, don't seem to have any missing pieces at the moment. And the other thing I noticed, it had been shaken around quite a lot in transit and the stabiliser support for the front wheel is missing one of the nipples on the end. So I can't be bothered to send it back for that if that's going to be the only issue. Um, that just clips on with a rubber that goes around the frame to catch the wheel. So we can sort that out of our own accord. So what do you get in the box? You get the instruction manual, which doesn't really tell you very much. It just says push the pieces together. So it's set up and uh, have a look. Yeah. In the box there's the main base and the top telescope tube. So I'm going to get it out of the box and lay it out. Right, that's all the bits laid out. So we can see we've got the main base telescope tube, little tool tray, and the main bike clamp stand. And what I wanted... So when I first tried to insert the telescope tube into the tripod base, the flange compression was so tight it was taking chunks out of the coating on this surface and scratching. That's, that gouge line is going in and then there's a gouge line coming back as well. So, so it's going to need a little bit of love to make it function smoothly. Um, obviously it goes without saying this isn't a sponsored or pro mode video. Just showing you things I'm going to do to make this work better. I think it's reasonably good value for what I've seen so far. It's uh, pretty cheap. So another thing that I don't like is the tool tray, the nuts that come with it, nice magnetic holder, but the nuts that come with it drop into the back in the slots here, but it's very easy to drop out the nut from the tool tray. I prefer a captive um, nut in there, at least one that doesn't fall out. and. The way I'm going to do that is these are standard M6 and they're quite thin. The box of M6 that I have is slightly fatter and that will press tightly into the slot on the bottom here so the nuts won't get lost. part we need to address first is this top tube here. There's it got the sharp edges which are taking chunks out of the powder coating of the main tube. So I'm going to take that off and go around it with a file deburring tool, uh, chisel and make it so that it's it's smooth. That off without too much drama. Chisel here and I'm going to go around and deburr the leading edge of the plastic to make sure there's no sharp edges. Another shoulder in the tube there, you can see it. 
that's got a moulding mark on it as well. I shall also go and make sure that that's nicely deburred where the split runs down the moulding. Go and check both sides of that as well. So these are the kind of bits I've just taken off around the edge. The burr run out from the file. Okay, now I've got some sandpaper. Alright, let's see how that goes on the tube. Okay, that deburred and sanded, we can press that, that on the top there. And something I can see already, the plastic's not opened up evenly and this shoulder's collapsed round further than the other one. So as a result the corner is biting into the tube. So how much that's pulling in already need to take a little bit more off this edge at the top here so that when it squeezes up it will squeeze up around the centre of the tube rather than pressing in just on the one point. Okay, so I've just given the two millimeter leading edge onto this side so that the tube doesn't get a high pressure point and when that's on there that's going to be fine. Now next up to address is this is the bottom end of the telescope tube and this plastic bung uh, presumably is meant to be the, the running bushing which goes up and down the inside of this tube. Now it's got a few large um, moulding marks on it which actually make it catch. So I'm just going to pair those back so they're uh, in line with the edge of the tube and then when it runs up and down inside it'll be smooth. The other thing I've noticed where the tube's been cut off is a couple of dings into here. I didn't think it was a problem with the top uh, compression fitting however they do just still catch the pipe so I'm just going to run around the inside of this on that top millimetre with some emery paper. Put the whole assembly together, pin the floor of it with my foot and I can actually lift it up with one hand and push it down with one hand which is something I couldn't do when it first arrived. So, big improvement. Next up we'll be addressing the cross slide. Cross slide is in here this is the part which clamps the main bicycle frame. Go through there. Uh, I suspect I'm going to have to do the same deburring. Yes, so I can feel looking through there, and you could even see the discontinuity in the moulding lines. Right now, I've cleaned up all of the pieces on here. I can control the height of this using one hand, which is nice turns around and this clamp I can also adjust with almost one hand. The fact is I can actually move it and then you can lock it off. Yeah, the reason that of course I can twist it but with uh, just one finger when it's free means that you can put it where you want. That's much improved. Now I'm going to spend a little while seeing if I can make the tray, which is here, a little bit easier because when the thing folds up, the tray is kind of in the way. So I probably want to end up taking the tray off when I store it. And just these little nuts, a little bit too mobile. So they fall out. This is a standard M6 and what I've done here is just bevel back the two sides of the nut compartment because the standard M6 is slightly fatter than the one they supplied. About a millimetre thicker. Which means that it will press in now 
and retain itself so when you undo the bolt it won't fall out. So I'm going to do the same to the other side. That's just running the chisel down there again. Beveled back the inside edge of the nut retainer there. Got my M6 nut. Now I can press that in and get it to line up the hole. Now I can take the bolts and the other half of the horseshoe clamp put it around the stem get it started without having to worry about finding the location of the nut I also took the opportunity to go and deburr and take all the moulding flanges off the bracket as well. Now it's a DIY tool, so should you expect when you buy a DIY tool to have to do some DIY on it? Um, open question really, but the small improvements will make it much better to use in that you can actually move the pieces where you want. Right, so where the ear broke off, the anti-smacky and the face device for the wheel. I'm just going to drill through here and then put a self tapper in. Actually I'm going to move to somewhere I'm not going to skewer myself. Put a pilot hole through there and got a self tapper. Run that in. Now I've got two ears again. Hopefully that will go over the top there. Good as new. So a bonus little repair tip for anyone who's broken the ear off the wheel stabiliser. She'll be uh, looking forward to using this as I've got some work to do on my daily ride bike. Thanks for watching.